Welcome back everyone. This is going to be the first of our multi-lesson discussion on discussing Azure Virtual WAN. We again have a lot of ground to cover. This lesson is going to start off with a lot of the high-level basics that we are going to further expand as we go along in this section. In this lesson, as is tradition, we will start off with a big picture overview of what exactly is the Azure Virtual WAN service, talk about the use case for Virtual WAN, or in other words, why you would want to use this managed service over non-managed versions, talk about the main components of an Azure Virtual WAN implementation, briefly talk about transitive networking and how it acts differently compared to a non-managed network pairing setup, and as is also tradition, we are going to talk about the different SKUs available when working with the Virtual WAN service. So starting off once again with the big picture, what exactly is the Azure Virtual WAN service? Probably the easiest definition to come up with that can easily explain it is that think of Virtual WAN as easy mode hub and spoke topology. So we talked about the hub and spoke topology in our network pairing section in this course in which we discussed having a centralized network that has multiple spoke networks connecting to it as a centralized hub for everything else to connect through it. Pretty much the same concept here. The main difference is that Azure Virtual WAN is a managed hub and spoke infrastructure or topology that does a lot of the same things as a hub and spoke setup, such as incorporating multiple hybrid connections like VPN and Express Route, can connect to multiple virtual networks, and can dynamically handle routing. In other words, routing is an automatic process, which is really nice. And on top of that, it greatly simplifies the process of deploying third-party network virtual appliances or the first-party Azure Firewall service directly into your managed hubs. Moving on, let's think of a typical scenario in which virtual WAN would be a good option to use, especially when compared to creating your own non-managed hub-and-spoke topology maybe by pairing together different virtual networks. Now, technically, you do not have to use a virtual WAN service for anything, especially when working with hybrid connections, because you can definitely put this together yourself. However, there are some different things that you are in charge of that virtual WAN handles, or at least makes a lot easier for you. For example, when working with a non-managed hub and spoke topology, you are 100% in charge of adding and updating routes across all your different virtual networks. You're in charge of creating and managing your various network gateway connections, whether it is a point-to-site or site-to-site -site VPN or an express route connection. You're also in charge of integrating and deploying different virtual network appliances or the Azure Firewall service. And you're also in charge of updating the routes through those network virtual appliances for all your different individual virtual networks. Technically, you do not need to use virtual WAN for any of these responsibilities. However, the main advantage is that the virtual WAN service makes all these tasks comparatively a whole lot easier, which is typically the case for most managed services versus non-managed services. Moving on, let's take a quick high-level look of the different components of a typical virtual WAN implementation, of which we can see an example topology on the right side. Now, there's quite a bit going on here. Let's go ahead and quickly break each of those down. At the highest level, we have the virtual WAN service itself, which is simply an overlay of the entire virtual WAN infrastructure including one or more hubs and all the different virtual networks that are directly connected to each one of your hubs. Speaking of hubs, that's going to be the next component we focus on, which you see there in the middle labeled Virtual WAN Hub. And the hub is simply a managed virtual network. It literally is just a virtual network, but is managed for you on your behalf and is not surprisingly the core or hub of any virtual WAN implementation which means also not surprisingly, it is the main connection point for all your different Azure virtual networks and all your other hybrid connections like VPN and express route circuits as well. Our next component to look at is that of connection units. These are specifically your hybrid connections that are connected to your virtual WAN hubs, such as site-to-site -site VPN, point-to-site -site VPN using OpenVPN and IKE version two only, and of course, express route circuits as well. One interesting note that we will unpack in a later lesson is that our site-to-site -site and point-to-site VPN connections are two separate connection types not built into the same VPN gateway as if we were working with an unmanaged virtual network. And then our last component to preview for now is that of simply other connections. Specifically, we have virtual network connections. In other words, Azure virtual networks connecting to our hub. And we can also connect multiple hubs known as a hub-to-hub -hub connection as well. Moving on, I want to take a quick look on how Azure Virtual WAN handles transitive networking. Yes, we're talking about transitive networking yet again.
Unlike our previous discussions on working with network peering with Azure Virtual WAN, transitive network is indeed possible. Hooray! Specifically, when working with virtual WAN, virtual networks can communicate with each other spoke virtual network through the hub if we are using the standard virtual WAN SKU. And we'll talk more about that here in a second. For now, though, just understand that the standard SKU when working with virtual WAN also has a managed router built into each individual hub that will automatically forward traffic from one spoke VNet over to another. This is similar to our exception we were talking about in our network peering section, in which if you deploy a network virtual appliance into our unmanaged hub network, that NVA or virtual appliance does have the ability to forward routes from one spoke net to another. Pretty much the same concept here, except it's all automatic. Very nice. Also note this idea of transitive networking is not limited to a single hub in a single virtual WAN implementation. Rather, if you have multiple hubs in the same virtual WAN, transitive networking also works across multiple hubs as well. In this case, we have VNet3 that is attached to Hub2. VNet3 is able to directly communicate with VNet1 and VNet2 thanks to transitive networking built into each of our individual hubs. As we will discuss in more detail in our upcoming lesson on virtual WAN routing, by default, every network is able to communicate with every other network, or in other words, anyone can talk to anyone by default. And of course, this means that virtual networks can also still communicate with hybrid locations as well, with another advantage that compared to our unmanaged peering connections, we do not have to go through the additional configuration of tagging a hub to use a remote gateway to share that gateway with other networks. Again, all of that is automatically turned on by default. Finishing things up in this initial conceptual overview, let's once again talk about SKUs. Yes, we have SKUs for everything. When discussing virtual WAN, we have two SKUs, that of the basic and the standard SKU. The basic SKU is, by comparison, really stripped down. The only features that it has built into it is that you can create hybrid site-to-site -site VPN connections, and both SKUs also have the ability to connect multiple virtual networks as well. And regarding the basic SKU, that's really about it. By comparison, the standard SKU has a lot more stuff built into it. It is able to connect to site-to-site -site VPN connections, point-to-site, express route. Of course, it can also connect to other virtual networks as well. And it also has the additional features of transitive networking built into it, like we talked about in the previous slide, through any virtual hub. And we can directly deploy the Azure Firewall service and third-party network virtual appliances into our standard virtual WAN hubs as well. With that, it's going to conclude our initial conceptual overview of how Azure Virtual WAN works. Once again, we still have a lot more ground to cover. Let's go ahead and review our key takeaways for this lesson before we move on. In this lesson, we start off with the initial overview of what exactly is the Virtual WAN service, in which we learned it is a managed hub and spoke topology implementation, which, like any hub and spoke setup, can easily connect virtual networks and hybrid locations as well. And it also simplifies the process of deploying virtual appliances in the Azure Firewall service. And it can also easily manage and automatically update your routes. We talked about the components in a virtual WAN implementation, which includes the virtual WAN itself, which is simply an entire overlay of all Azure-based resources, including hubs and connected virtual networks, various hybrid connections, virtual network connections, and hub-to-hub -hub connections as well. We then briefly talked about transitive networking, in which transitive networking is possible if you're using the virtual WAN standard SKU, which also includes transitive connectivity between multiple hubs and the same virtual WAN implementation. And we finished up by talking about our favorite subject, SKUs, specifically talking about our virtual WAN SKUs, in which we learned we have the basic SKU, which by comparison is fairly stripped down and that it only supports connecting to Azure virtual networks and site-to-site -site VPN connection only. It does not have transitive peering built into it. And then we also talked about our standard SKU, which has all hybrid connection types, transitive peering all across the board, and allows you to deploy network virtual appliances in the Azure Firewall service. So, wow, quite a bit of ground we already covered. We have a lot more to go. Let's go ahead and move on to our lesson and pick up from there.